Hi everyone and welcome to today's video which is Warhammer Imperium number 25. In this one we get uh, five Necron Immortals, we also explore the Adeptus Mechanicus Forge Worlds and new data sheets and tutorials. So without any further ado, let's make a lot of noise and break into it. Right, there we go, let's throw that on the floor, don't want that. So there's the plastic, it looks like we get five 32mm bases and we also get a trifold sheet, so let's have a look at that first shall we. So Forge Worlds, March to War. So I do know that in the Adeptus Mechanicus um, Codex, I think this is supposed to be Mars. So quite a nice trifold. Tells you disposition and how different uh, organisations within the Forge world are done. Might for the Adaptus Mechanicus. Some great pictures of the models there. Metallica is uh, one of the Forge worlds. Mars and Riser. So, yeah, really nice. That will obviously go into the Baptist Mechanicus section. So, let's have a look at the magazine, shall we? So, straight off the bat, we get our information on Necron Immortals. Um, I've not collected any of these previously so this is again another unit that I haven't had so I'm looking forward to building and painting these. They use Tesla carbines by the look of it or Gauss blasters. We then have their battle record on the back side of that page. The Royal Court whether be whether they be Pharons in command of entire dynasty or overlords in control of a handful of tomb worlds. Powerful Necron lords all possess their own royal court, a selection of lesser nobles, military officers, cryptic advisors, and heavily armed bodyguards who help them rule their territories. So overlords and lords, royal wardens and lich guard. I think that we get some lich guard. Uh, do we not? Do we not get some Lich Guard later on in the series? So Cryptex, Tachnomancers, Plasmancers, Chronomancers and Psychomancers. So we then have something on the rule of the Imperium and different Administratum uh, identifiers there. Ruling the Imperium, and then we have information on the Ultramarines, the Empire of Ultramar. We have our How to Build. Now these look just as complicated as the rest of them. It's going to be interesting to see how they fare. Um, at least the legs come in one part, so that's good. Um, it looks like we're making them with the Gauss blasters in this build section. Necron Immortals, how to paint, Rune Lord Brass, Abaddon Black, Lead Belcher, Canoptic Alloy and Corax White pretty much being the paints that we've got and they obviously will be going in uh, and that's the final gallery painting them up so far. We then have data sheets number three Royal Warden Necron Immortals and a tutorial uh, adaptive strategy and relentless march relentless march movement talking about that and then we have something, I think this goes into the advanced rule section in your folder. How to play Warhammer 40,000, 
rules key. Um, and this looks like it might be another scout mission to play. So defensive perimeter, an overwhelming Necron assault on Xiphos has been met with stern resistance. Despite suffering terrible losses, Necron troops have managed to breach the Imperial lines and begun to overrun the first ring of fortresses, gun batteries and defensive positions. In response, the Space Marines have dispatched their forces to drive the Necrons back and prevent the foe from finding and exploiting any weaknesses in the, fortresses, in the Fortress Moon's defensive perimeter. Necrons, Royal Warden, storm the walls. Under the command of their Royal Warden, a phalanx of Necron warriors and a unit of elite immortals have breached the walls of outpost Giridon. They must fight their way into the fortress, secure the walls and silence the gun batteries in order for the Necron uh, reinforcements to arrive. Space Marines hold the line. With his captain and fellow battle brothers engaged in battle towards Siphos, main citadel, a Primaris lieutenant and his accompanying assault intercessors are all that stands between the Necrons and the destructive and the destruction of outpost Giridon's gun batteries. They must hold their positions and drive the Necron back. We are playing on the grey battle mat again. Forces in play are Royal Warden, five Necron Immortals, ten Necron Warriors, and the, old, um, the Space Marines have a Primaris Lieutenant and two squads of five assault intercessors. Looks like we're playing uh, on the short edges again. So similar to the last um, setup, it's a three inch deployment zone on the short board edge opposite each other. And there you go, that's that. Looking forward, issue number 26 is the Tech Priest Dominus, which I'm looking forward to as well. Uh, and then we get some more scenery in issue 27 in the uh, Hematrope Reactor. Come back in a sec and we'll build some Immortals. Let me bring you down and we'll have a quick look at the, pr at the plastic, because I always forget, don't I? So these were sculpted according to the sprue. Uh, where did it go? Let's have some light. Uh, she did see it. Where's it gone? Uh, 2011. These were made. And looking at this, we have three different weapon types here. So, excellent. Three different weapon types for these. Um, so we got the legs. Some of them are a bit squatty, which is a shame. we got these Gauss blasters here. Uh, very similar in design to the Gauss Reapers that uh, the Necron Warriors now have. These, I think, are these part of Death Marks? These rifles? They look pretty intimidating. And then we have a weapon here that I'm not familiar with. Um, usual good sculpting though, plenty of detail on the Necron bodies. Uh, we have a choice of heads. We have 10 heads here and I'm assuming because they're two different designs, if you can see that. Yeah, so those are the heads. Um, looks like we've got separate spines here and obviously the chest pieces. So yeah, I mean, you can tell it's a 2011 sculpt because of the way that it's quite ordered on the sprue. Um, whereas a lot of the modern sculpts and sprues that they do are all over the place, um, mainly because of the uh, computer aided design uh, when they're doing the sprues um, helps them get the best um, positioning for the product because let's face it all this plastic on the sprue is wasted plastic so they want to minimize waste um, and pack the sprue as much as possible but yeah re really good really nice these should build up quite nicely so I'm looking forward to doing these so the Immortal, uh, I've obviously taken it off the sprue, I've cleaned it up, 
uh, and ready to put together. So the first thing we're going to put together is the torso and the spine. So this with the immortals, um, we've got the piping that's coming down from the bottom of the spine is the back, not to be confused with the back spine that would be used for the death marks. Oops. Be still. And then you've got the upper spine, which goes in there. Like so. So I'm just gonna let that go off for a second. And this, these legs, um, once you've built the torsos, you can marry them up to any legs. Now there's something I noticed about this that I will show you once the death mark is ready to be put onto his legs. But I'm just gluing the legs on so that they have chance to finish going off. So the next thing is the Gauss Blaster. And this comes in three parts, three main parts. And we have the back of the Gauss Blaster uh, with the tubing that's going to marry up with the tubing coming out of the spine. And then we have the muzzles. Which just go on there. Like so. So this is just so much like the Gauss Reaper um, you know, on standard Necrons, it's just obviously a bit, bit larger. Um, it's probably the same as, a, as what the Royal Warden has. Let's have a quick look. So, yep, yeah, there you go. Pretty much the same weapon, more or less, on the Royal Warden. Now, the instructions recommend that you glue in the first arm. Apologies for my iPad going off on one. Glue in the first arm like so and you should have the tubing marry up as well so i'm going to it's probably a bit too much just drop in some plastic weld on that and then some glue onto the second arm and then that should marry up quite easily to the wrist joint there. So we've got that. Now as I said, you can use any legs and the death mark heads are, sorry, not the death mark, but the immortals heads are this wee chappy. So standard Necron head with the two eyes. That You can see that you've got the top of the neck as 
So we've got the top of the neck joint just here and the back of the spine and you're going to pop your skull necron head just in there. like so. Now, this is actually quite a small ball joint there, but we have an absolutely huge socket for it to go into. And um, so you've, you're gonna have a lot of uh, potential movement if you don't hold this in place whilst it dries and just getting that into position like so and then I'm just going to leave that to dry for a bit and there you go. So that is the Necron Immortal, it's a very simple um, literally, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. It's like, goes together no problem. And unlike the flayed ones, it's nice that these legs are fairly simple, but this is what they will look like. Okay, so there you go. Join me in the next video and we'll have a look at issue 26. All right, take care. Bye-bye.